Hey guys, so today in this video, I'm going to talk to you about a few things cubic related that I think are really interesting. So again, we've got a little bit of price discussion here, only a small bit, but then I'm going to talk about some of the regulation landscape and what I see happening with cubic and some really interesting revelations that I've had in terms of um, the, the, you know how, how regulations are going to play out with cubic and then um just a few a few fun things that are launching on cubic as well so let's get into it so yeah so where where kind of things have started with me over the last week um with cubic was something interesting that was said here by sergi ivan Cheglo. so um, here on twitter we see talk of sergi saying um or he said this actually in the discord group and i shared this on twitter the sergi was saying that he felt that cubic could go to one cent and i basically shared a post and you know to go over some interesting points that here i just said um you know when when the sergi think that this that the cubic can hit one cent he said that he thinks it's when it'll happen when agart launches then when asked how long before it launches he said he thinks it will be about three years and um you know, then I said that I think it's exciting, you know, that it's going to do about 2000x to hit that. Um, but then as I went down here where it got quite quite interesting or started the whole thing on Twitter was um, I just happened to say that I didn't like Sergi um, talking about price or any crypto creator talking about price. And it just made me feel icky. I didn't elaborate on it anymore, um, but I did say that we should be happy in the Cubic community that we have a voice that's actively working to push the price of Cubic up. So that was the, the post I made. Then a guy that I'm a big fan of, um, Brave Crypto, he just made a post that was quite interesting. And he didn't direct this at me, but it was obviously coming from me and the, the, the chat that we were having. And basically he made a great point here is that he said, I don't mind price or valuation talk by a crypto project leader as long as the project is legitimate. And then he said, it is a damn business. Literally every business owner in the world talks about their products, pricing and valuation. It, it is as normal as normal gets. And then he said, Crypto X is just delusional on an extreme level of not understanding crypto projects are just as much a business as any business in life outside of crypto. And then he said that they, for some strange reason, think real life business and crypto projects are different. They are not. It shows the extreme lack of maturity and lack of business experience for most people on Crypto X which is actually very much the reality. The overwhelming majority of people on this platform are everyday average people working nine to five jobs in the rat race and never owned their own businesses before. Now, I do run my own business, but I actually do work a nine to five job as well. So he, you know, referring to me, I don't, none of this is a personal attack or anything bad being said here, but you know, he's, he's correct about me in, the, in this instance. Um, and then he said, so why should their opinions dictate the rules or of conduct of business owners, aka project, uh, crypto project leaders. So like Sergi, Ivan Cheglo. And he's right, like, you know, he's totally right about that. And he said, the answer is simply that their opinions should not dictate that. And um, the only time I have a problem with a project focusing on or discussing price is if their token is, you know, just like shit coin, basically just some meme coin that's launched just to spend a bit of, bit of money. And he said, because then it's a red flag. But when a real business talks about their future valuation goals, that is not bearish. And he said that's funny that you would even have to teach people that. And basically, it's just the, the point is that he's saying that, that the majority of real life businesses fail exactly for the reason of having inexperienced owners slash leaders with no clear vision of where the business project should reach, you know, in the future in terms of goals. And basically, the, the whole point that he's making is that any business in the crypto space should have a leader that's actually trying to push the price of the project because if they are that's that's okay businesses do that everywhere and if they are doing this the the project can hit you know extreme targets while if no one is pushing it in that direction those targets might not be hit so fantastic great points um i really enjoyed it there was a few people that said some things and then i kind of just chimed in with what i thought about this so and this is where I might have made it clear in my first post about really where I was coming from. And I said back to Braver that I agree with your thoughts on this, but there are also regulatory eyes in crypto. Cryptocurrencies aren't supposed to be shares in the business venture. 
if the cryptocurrency becomes a big deal, the regulators see dollar signs and an opportunity to make a big name for themselves. When a CEO discusses price, it can usually be used in a legal setting as evidence to why that crypto is a security. So basically, what I was saying is that I agree with everything that Braver was talking about here. But if you take, for example, the, the Cubic uh, business, you know, business that's behind Cubic, that is a business and we can't buy shares in that business right now. But if you take the Cubic cryptocurrency, the Cubic cryptocurrency is not supposed to be a business. We're not supposed to be buying shares in it. It's just meant to be a currency. And that's where an issue comes in because if we start treating it like shares, then the SEC comes in, they say it's security and we we all end up getting getting um, sued. Or to put it better, the, the project gets sued project traders get sued and the project fails a real example of that is um you know if you were to go and look up uh ripple sec um as we all know ripple was sued by the sec because it was seen that xrp was uh shares in the company ripple or that's what the sec is trying to prove and so that's the point that i was making trying to make back to uh braver here is i was trying to say to him that you know I understand what he's talking about from a business context, but when he's talking about a cryptocurrency um, and it it being treated in a sort of way that someone's trying to punt the price, that can be seen as a share. And anyway, so Braver got back to me and said, I get your thoughts, I do, but can you show me one legal case in history where a business owner or project leader talking about the price valuation goals of their product business led to a government institution like the SEC deeming the project of that company is security. And he's just basically making the point, have you ever seen where someone talks about their project, tries to pump the price of it, um, and talks about it in price or valuation goals, and see that company uh, getting sued by the SEC? Now, I take his point here, but to be honest, again, I think he's missing, he was missing the point of what I'm saying, is that if, if someone's talking about Cubic or any cryptocurrency like a share, that's going to draw regulatory eyes. So we kind of just ended up, I wasn't going to start a big, you know, argument online about this. Um, this guy is a very wise guy. We both had differing opinions. But anyway, that's besides the point because the next day I had a real revelation. Uh, revelation and um, it this blew my mind because I never really understood fair launched projects until we had this conversation and I slept in it. I woke up the next day and thought about it. And basically, this is the post I made the next day. I said that I had a cubic price and regulations revelation today. And then I went into the whole point of, um, you know, Sergi Ivan Ceglo talking about cubic going to one cent. And I said that I didn't like the statement because I didn't like them talking about it. And how that, you know, starts me thinking straight away about regulatory bodies questioning, questioning if they're ma manipulating price. And then he talks about Braver sharing their post, um, you know, just talking about it's great to have a project leader talking about bullish price potential. And then uh, anyway, I went in and talked about my revelation then. And my revelation was that since Cubic is a fair launch project and has been given to the community, it isn't controlled by Sergi Ivan Ceglo or anybody else. Sure, Sergi Ivan Ceglo could probably be viewed as the lead developer of Cube of the cubic project but anyone could develop on the cubic network tomorrow you or i could come up with a great idea and develop on the cubic network and become the primary developer working on it, it is completely open source it isn't owned by anyone this is such a key point is cubic was created but then it was just released to the world as an open source platform anyone can use it nobody nobody owns it so then i just said that uh, Sergi Ivan Ceglo is just another member of the Cubic community, just like you and I, because they gave the Cubic network to the community, meaning that from a regulatory point of view, there is as much issue with them discussing price potential as there is with you or I discussing price potential. So if the SEC ever questioned Sergi Ivan Ceglo's comments, he can simply just respond by saying, Cubic is not my project and, and I'm not the owner of it, I just develop on the network. Sergi Ivan Ceglo can only own Cubic by buying or mining it, just like you or I, and legally that makes him and the Cubic project untouchable in a securities discussion. It would be as ludicrous, and this is the key point here, it would be as ludicrous 
as the SEC trying to take down the cubic ecosystem because you or I discussed its price potential. So for example, I'm a cubic owner. I've got an interest in the cubic project. If I was any good at coding or anything like that, I could develop on this project right now. In my YouTube videos, I've discussed price potential of cubic and said where I potentially think it could go. The SEC, it's as ridiculous the SEC suing or, you know, in some way trying to take down the cubic project through Sergi Ivan Chegla's words as it would be for the SEC to look at one of my YouTube videos and hear me saying, you know, cubic could go to one cent or something like that and then say, you know, that that guy has made a YouTube video about Cubic's price. So in that case, let's take down the Cubic network. It, it's actually as ridiculous as that. And this is the genius of a fair launch product, a project. A, you know, a fair launch project is a project that has been launched without giving any shares to the team that created it, without giving any shares to uh, venture capitalists. Um, I'm even using the word shares because that, that's the way it'd be thought of. But without giving any of the crypto or the coin or the currency to any of them. The only way to get Cubic initially, and same with projects like Cass as well, and the same with Bitcoin, for example, or Ethereum initially, the only way for people to get that currency was by mining it or buying it. And that's the only way Sergi Ivan Chegolo can. So I ended then by saying, my revelation is that a fair launch project can never have the sort of regulatory issue that XRP experienced. So that's what I meant by this um, Ripple SEC case here. Um, a fair launch project is base basically like the internet in terms of ownership. The internet had creators and lead developers, but nobody legally owns it. Nobody's going to come around tomorrow and sue the internet. You, you, like you, I don't don't think I need to say more. You you get that. Basically, Cubic, um, you know, Cast as well, Bitcoin. Ethereum originally, not now, but since switched to proof of stake, but all those platforms are open source released to the world. They're, you know, it's the same as suing the internet as trying to sue one of those those platforms. So I ended by saying that, that now in the future, when Sergi Ivan Ceglo discusses price potential, I will be excited because I know that there is someone who can pump the price of Cubic and is driven to see it rise. But I also know that from a regulatory point of view there won't be issues and then I ended by saying and this is so important yet again I found something I was unsure of with Cubic and then after some research I realized that this was all taught true in the design really key point at the end there because if you're following me on Twitter and YouTube you'll know that I'm not just I'm really bullish in Cubic but I'm not just blindly bullish is at times I'll hear something or read something and I'll put it out to the community and I'll be like I don't understand this this makes me a bit feel a bit weird about what what you guys think and people answer me and then I get then I realize what the true case is of the project and um and I become bullish again and I'm like oh another another thing knocked out of the way that, that I was worried about and one of the main issues that I had was I didn't like Sergi and the way he talked at times but now I realize that he is just like a developer on this project he's not he's not the owner of the project um and then you know, when you have a guy like this willing to work on pumping the price of a project, I mean, look at what he's done in the past with IOTA and NXT, two of the biggest returns ever from, from crypto projects. So that's a really, really, really big deal um, to have someone like Sergi Ivan Ceglo legally, from a regulatory point of view, pumping the price of a project. And that's got me, got me excited. Um, just one point to end with then as well. Uh, I, and I forgot to mention this in previous videos, but this is just a cool thing that's ha that's coming to the Cubic network as well. Um, there's a game going to come come into it, uh, come onto the network called um, My Last Match, and it's a post-apocalyptic survival game running via Cubic, and it's planning to give a special gift to every one of its 676 shareholders. Um, so there's going to be an IPO happening in Q2 of 2024. And it's going to be a standard Cubic Smart Contract IPO. Now, interestingly, what this means is Cubic is going to be burned. A lot of Cubic is going to be burned because of this. It could be like three, four trillion Cubic just burned overnight because of this, this IPO, which is going to be great. Also, Cubic will be an in-game currency. And now when you think of it, if this is one 
computer game launching on the Cubic Network, how many other games are going to launch. And that's going to be a big deal. It's just going to, you know, there's going to be a whole ecosystem building on top of um, Cubic Network. Just another reason to get excited about the future of Cubic in 2024. Um, and just really exciting to think of these fair launch projects and how they are untouchable from a regulatory standpoint. That's all I've got for you today, guys. I'll see you all on the outside.